Who am I, Kylie? Why a fox? Why not a, a horse or a beetle or a bald eagle? I'm saying this more as, like, existentialism, you know? I don't know what you're talking about, but it sounds illegal. Wes Anderson creates a triumph in animated storytelling. Honey, I'm seven non-fox years old now. My father died at seven and a half. I don't want to live in a hole anymore, and I'm going to do something about it. I'm asking if he thinks we're in for a hard winter. Fantastic, Mr. Fox. Thank you. Uh, thanks for coming out. When and why did you start saying, I could actually see making this my next movie, and what about it made you think there's actually a movie here for you to do? It was a long time ago that I decided to do this, maybe 10 years ago. And um, I guess I sort of simultaneously was thinking I would like to do a stop motion film, and this should be it. I, I don't know which came first, but it was more or less together. Were there films in that genre that you really loved that you think you made you, inspired you to do that? The thing I like about stop motion is that you can sort of see what the technique is a bit. I mean, not, ex not precisely, but you can tell that somebody's hands are manipulating these inanimate objects and making them seem alive. You know, I always liked the Harryhausen movies and the Harryhausen parts of, of uh, old movies, and that stop motion is a bit herky-jerky and it has real texture. And the Rankin Bass, I, I loved these uh, Christmas specials and holiday specials that were, that were the stop motion ones that are kind of primitive stop motion, but um, they have a real charm. Now, I get to spend a lot of time uh, going on to film sets and interviewing people, but I've never watched voice actors work. So I'm curious from both of your perspectives, um, how different that is from the traditional live action acting. I've never done an animated movie before and um, from what I've seen in making of animated movies, they get these incredible cast of actors together but they never actually meet. Um, typically, um, the actors are all isolated and they record their parts over the course of many years all in different times but Wes really wanted it to feel natural. So we all did get together and we would act out the movie like it was like a movie set, but just with no cameras. So if you're asking me how it was uh, different, it was, it was similar to being on a movie. You just weren't in costume and there weren't lots of people standing around watching you. Um, it was really just the actors and Wes and, um, and a very agile sound man chasing us with a microphone. Um, and, but we, he was really recording the real sound, so I felt a little bit like you could just try crazy things and go a little bit nuts, um, because you, you just never knew what could happen, and it was nice. So it was kind of like, I feel like it was not making a movie, but it wasn't doing an, an animated movie. It was like somewhere in the middle. It was almost like doing a, pl a radio play or something. Yeah. One thing that was funny was, um, well, it's at the end of the movie, they see this wolf you know, off, in the, off on this hill. Well, we had this, you know, we were at a place where there was a hill, and uh, so we said, well, why don't we, so somebody can go be the wolf, so, you know, that'll, that'll give them a thing to do. And Bill Murray's character's not in that scene, but he was there, so he said, <laughs> and um, he went up the hill, and he um, was just the most wonderful wolf. I mean, you wouldn't believe. Uh, our friend Jeremy was there, and he filmed them with his phone. So after we finished, I was watching it and I was like, it's such a good wolf. And we, I brought it back to, I brought it to England. When we animated it, I gave it to the animator. He modeled the animation of it on Bill Murray on this phone uh, recording. So he's uncredited um, wolf <laughs> in it. <laughs> Wes, um, when you were working on the script part of this, uh, you actually went and spent a pretty considerable amount of time at Roald Dahl's home. First we made the choice that basically this is where we're going to set the film, mm -hmm. here at his house and in the woods around it and the fields around it and it's going to be in this part of England. And you know we recreated lots of objects and buildings and things from this place, Gypsy House. And, and the other thing is, while we were there, we, we looked at the manuscript for, um, the, for the book, for Fantastic Mr. Fox, which is on you know, yellow legal pads, 
And um, the first draft of it ended differently from the way the published book does, and that ending we used in the film. So we, you know, stole it from his first version they didn't use, and, and it became, so uh, the end of the movie, it had his illustrations also, and those were kind of inspiring. So, you know, we, we, we got quite a lot from being there, I think. Thank you guys very much for doing this. Thank you, this. Patrick. Really thank, thank you so much. Thank you, everyone, for coming. Yeah, thanks, thanks for sticking so around, you guys. It's very sweet. Thank you.